Good morning and welcome. It's Sunday the 7th of March. Welcome to our worship online from here to Manuel Southhill from Weymouth. Whoever you are and wherever you may be joining us from, thank you for being a part of today's worship. My name is the Reverend Matt and I'm the curate here serving alongside the Reverend Joe, who we'll hear from later in the service. Today is the third Sunday of Lent. Lent being that special time for the church when we spend time reflecting and preparing and getting ourselves ready for Easter. Now, as a part of that, the Reverend Joe has recorded a series of reflections that are available to watch again here on YouTube. And there's a new reflection being added every Tuesday and Thursday at 12 o'clock all the way up to Easter Sunday. So I thoroughly recommend those to you when you find time to watch them. Now, remember, you can also get in touch to say hello via our Facebook page. It's also a place to go to see some of the creative, amazing and yummy baking that's been going on as part of our weekly Bake Off Challenge. And if you go to the Facebook page on a Monday morning, you'll see what this week's challenge will be. So do get involved if you can. But before we begin our worship today, let's just spend some time sharing some words from the Bible. And then I'm going to pray for us. And I was thinking about today's service and uh, I was brought to this psalm, Psalm 19, and just these opening couple of words. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. It's just a really great reminder that with everything going on, that even if we don't praise God, his creation will. But like God's creation, I think we're called to praise and worship a God that loves us. So let me just pray for us before we begin. Lord God, thank you as we gather where we are, from our homes, alone or with members of our families. If we're feeling lonely, fearful or just confused by all that's going on, let us rest in your peace and calm any anxieties we may have. Help us to open our hearts and minds to you and allow the Holy Spirit to bless us as we come to you and give all our praise and worship to you today. So may the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Make a miracle worker 
waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, and that is who you are, that is who you are. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. It's who you are. That is who you are. time for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple courts he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. So he made a whip out of cords and drove all from the temple courts, both sheep and cattle. He scattered the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. To those who sold doves he said, get these out of here, stop turning my father's house into a market. His disciples remembered that it is written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then responded to him, what sign can you show us to prove your authority to do all this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and I will raise it again in three days. They replied, it has taken 46 years to build this temple and you are going to raise it in three days. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples recalled what he had said. Then they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. I wonder if you've ever been in the situation or seen something on the television that you just know is wrong. So wrong that it seems to hit you in your heart, like in the core of your being. It's something that's just so wrong that you know you have to act. You know you just can't help yourself. You have to respond. When I hear the story of Jesus going into the temple and turning over the tables of the money changers and driving out those who were selling animals, I wonder if that's the kind of sensation that Jesus had. It's nearly Passover a Jewish festival of huge importance. And so Jesus traveled from Galilee to Jerusalem to go to the temple to celebrate and to pray. And as he walks into the temple courts, what he sees just enrages him. It must have hit him at a heart level because what he sees he knows is wrong. Now, most of us, don't really know the Old Testament inside out, but Jesus would have done. And I can imagine that some words from Isaiah 56 might have been playing through his mind. Let me just read you verse seven. It says, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted at my altar, 
for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The temple, his father's house, is supposed to be a house of prayer. And Jesus walks into this sacred place and instead of worship, he finds something else happening. Instead of God being worshipped, there's another God being worshipped, a God with a small g. Instead of entering the place of prayer, a place devoted solely to his father, the God of money was being worshipped. In the outer courts was a table and on that table was an idol, a false God on a false altar. The temple being used to fuel idolatry. No wonder Jesus was angry. Lent is a time when we're encouraged to examine ourselves, our lives, our behaviour, how we live. And it's no coincidence that this passage is used across the church during Lent. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 16 says this. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit is in you? God's spirit dwells in you. I wonder if Jesus examined your life, what would he see being worshipped? We are living temples and the Holy Spirit dwells within us. Are our lives holy? Are they places of prayer and worship? Or would Jesus be outraged at the false gods that we place on false altars? What do we worship? What are the idols in our lives. In his book, Counterfeit Gods, Tim Keller writes that an idol is anything more important to you than God. Anything that absorbs your heart and your imagination more than God. Anything you seek to give you what God only can give. The gods of our culture include careers and making money, personal achievements, physical appearance, food, success, comfort, entertainment, could even be family and children, or social media, or your mobile phone. Most people know that you can make a god out of money or a god out of sex. But an idol is anything that is more important to you than God. A God alternative, or as Tim Keller puts it, a counterfeit God. I wonder if you're familiar with Tolkien's novels and films, The Lord of the Rings. Central to the plot, central to the story, is the Dark Lord Sauron's ring of power. The ring possesses a power that means whoever tries to use it or who carries it gets corrupted. Even the good characters gradually become enslaved by the ring, addicted to it so that they will go to great lengths to have it, even breaking their own moral codes or their own beliefs. The ring takes over, it changes them. And not suddenly, but gradually, bit by bit, the ring enslaves them in its power. This story highlights the power of idols the addiction and the seduction of idols. Slowly, bit by bit, they take over 
And so it's really important from time to time to reflect on our own lives, to examine how we live and to consider what we're really living for, what we're really worshipping. Because anything that is put in the place where God should be will let us down. It will disappoint and in some cases to disastrous effects. That doesn't mean that money or mobile phones or having a successful career or caring about your personal appearance or loving your family or any of these things are wrong. But if we look to these things for the hope and the meaning and the fulfillment that only God can give, then they have become idols, false gods being worshipped in the temple of our bodies. In this time of self-examination, the question for each of us isn't do I have a false god? But instead, what are the false gods in my life? As uncomfortable as it might be to admit, I'm sure each one of us have had rival gods hidden in our lives. And so the question should be, instead, how do we identify what the idols that creep into our lives are? And in his book, Tim Keller identifies four different ways that we can discern what those might be. And I'm gonna share them with you because I think they're helpful. First of all, imagination. What do you think about? What do you dream about when you've got space to think and dream? Is it shopping or spending money? Or is it a person? Or do you think about career moves? Now, occasional dreaming doesn't mean that you're idolising that thing, but you might find that there's something that seems to give you joy and comfort in your imagination regularly, something that you keep coming back to, and that might be a sign of something that you're idolising. Secondly, money. Another way to discern what your heart truly loves is to look at where you spend your money. Jesus says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Our pattern of spending can reveal our idols. Thirdly, how do you respond to unanswered prayer? You may attend worship regularly, you may have a strong faith, but when life is tough, when prayers are not answered, when hopes are frustrated, what do you turn to then? Do you press on in prayer and keep trusting God, or do you turn to something else for your hope and your salvation? Fourthly, consider your emotions. Think about some of the times when you felt in your life at a rock bottom point. Times when you might have felt full of fear or pain or guilt. Think about what drove you to that place. Were you driven there by following an idol? Is the place of fear or failure because you're seeking success maybe as an idol or the need of being satisfied or feel fulfilled. Jesus came to free us from slavery, from sin and from death. He laid down his life because he loves you and he wants you to live in that freedom. And when we're enslaved by idols, we're not living in the freedom that Jesus wants to give us. When we place false gods on false altars, they seduce us and eventually enslave us. And today I believe that God wants to bring us that freedom 
freedom from the things that we have idolized, the things we've put where God should be. And in a few moments, we're going to have the opportunity to place those things at the foot of the cross. But let me finish now with some words that Jesus said when he was tested by the Pharisees. He said this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandments greater than these. Amen. We come now to a time of prayer. And the cross that you can see before you is the Lenten cross that we have in the Vicarage Garden. We made it from the remains of our Christmas tree. And it helps us to link Christmas and Easter. A reminder that Jesus, who was born a baby in a stable in Bethlehem, is the same man who died upon the cross. And today we've been thinking about idols, thinking about the things that we, by accident, unconsciously, idolise. The things that we put in the place where God should be. And so I'm going to place at the foot of this cross a bag of coins to symbolise one of the idols of our culture, money. And as I do that, I just encourage you to, in your own mind, bring before God the things that you have idolised, the things that you need to place at the foot of the cross. And let's say together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. simply calm Longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart I'll bring you more than a song for a 
song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. thank you for joining us today thank you for all those who have been a part of putting today's worship together it's really great that we can still meet together online and worship as a community wherever and whoever we might be so please do say hello via our facebook page and remember that you can take part in this week's baking challenge just look out for that special post on monday morning also remember that every tuesday and thursday at 12 o'clock there'll be a new short reflection brought to us by the Reverend Joe as we continue our Lent journey towards Easter. So as we finish and go out into our day, let me just pray for us all. Christ, give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. So stay safe, stay well, and God bless.